Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're in the field today at a fleet service shop and they called me in for this 2012 Ford F-250 Power Stroke that is a beached whale. It's a salt truck, you see it's getting a little rusty, 160,000 miles, and uh, it drove to the shop for an engine reseal service. I guess the these power strokes they start leaking oil and they have the cab off to replace some gaskets but after that it never started again they said there's no communication with the engine computer now apparently there was an intermittent problem before the cab came off a intermittent starting problem but now it's dead in the water so let's uh, do a code scan see if we can even log in and go from there All right, so keys on, all the lights are on. I have to manually log in, select the year to 2012, and here's what we have. A lot of red modules. You can see the PCM is offline. And for example, if you go into transmission controller, lost communication with PCM. So that's exactly what we're dealing with. Missing communication with PCM. Okay, great, so I saved the report. Uh, what has the shop done so far? All right, so here's the PCM. You can see it's brand shiny new because yes, they fired a PCM at it, didn't fix it. Before doing that, they said they were missing power on these three wires, white and black wires. So they just cut them off, installed a jumper to the fuse box to whichever fuse was supposed to feed the PCM. Still nothing, still no communication. So that's where we're at. Brand new computer installed, and I think the original is on the seat. So I do want to put in the original because the mobilizer is, you know, stored in here. We don't want to do any key programming if we don't have to. And uh, let's check powers and grounds. By the way, while I was doing the code scan, I noticed the volt little voltmeter here said 9.2 volts. That's a little low. Um, let me grab a voltmeter and measure the voltage at the battery. If that's good. And we have 9.2 volts at the DLC. Well, that screams to me that potentially there's a bad, like, chassis ground or something. When they removed the cab, it crumbled because it's a salt truck. Um, so hopefully it's, uh, this will be not too long of a diagnosis. And we'll get this truck back up and running on the road. Well, it looks like that's the actual battery voltage, 8.8 .8 volts. It would be nice if we had fully charged batteries, but... Can't have everything in life. This one is 8.8 .8 volts. Let me get some jumper cables. We'll run the XL7, get some juice flowing. All right, a little XL7's pumping out some amps. About 25 amps going in, and our voltage is at 12.8 on the truck, so we'll just let this run while we do our diagnostics. Let's, uh, oh, jumper cable fell off. Let me get the original PCM installed and get a wiring diagram for powers and grounds. Alright, here we go. Powers and grounds. I got the new replacement PCM out of the way. This connector has everything. All the powers and grounds convenient to check. Here's the diagram. I apologize about the glare. I apologize about the wind noise. We're in the field. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so connector C1232B has the keep alive power, that's battery power coming from a fuse, and then the PCM power relay is switched by the engine computer, and then that feeds those three wires that they cut and uh, bypassed. Okay, there's also an ISPR PCM wake up coming from the BCM. We'll check all those. Let's start with the grounds one, two, three, four, five, all in a row, black and yellow wires. So, four amp test light coming from battery positive. If it finds a power, it's going to light up nice and bright. So the ground wires are one, two, three, four, five, all in this last row. So first one's good, second one's good, third one's good, fourth one's good, and fifth one is also good. So we just checked all the grounds. Now let's focus on the power feeds. All right, first power I want to check, just with the key off, is the battery keep alive power, pin 62 violet and red wire 
and set up the tripod. So now test light from battery ground, if we find the power, it's going to light up nice and bright. Pin 62 is going to be in the second row. So 66, 65, 64, 63, 62. Uh-oh. Is that it? Did we find the problem? Missing keep alive power? Missing battery power? What the heck? Let's, uh, let, let me double check that. And we'll check fuse F72 10 amp in the battery junction box. Nope, I was wrong. We have good power there. I was counting the pins from the wrong side. You have to be very meticulous about which wire you're checking. So we can check that one off the list. Next, I'm going to check pin 42. That is hot and start or run. So I have the probe in pin 42. I'm going to turn the key on. I'm going to see if this test light lights up. It did not. Now let me double check. We're in pin 42. We're counting in the third row. One, two, three. So 34, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 41, 42. That's it. We're missing a power right there. <laughs> fuse F52, 10 amp in the battery junction box. Let's look that fuse up. Alrighty, so fuse 52 in the battery junction box lives right here. From this relay, it's going to be one, two, three, four fuses over. Okay? So this jumper they had stuffed in right here. Well, it's hard to see that. So I popped that out. So let's count one, two, three, four. Guys, do you see that? It's a missing fuse. This should be a row of 10 amps. We got two missing fuses and one of them was the uh, the jumper. What the heck? Let's pop that fuse in and see if our power to the test light is restored. We can do, even do that live. I'm just going to take one of these 15 amps and uh, pop it in. Alright, moment of truth. Watch that test light right there as I install the fuse in the missing slot with the key on. Ready? <laughs> and key off. Test lights out. All right, let's install the PCM. We'll have to reconnect those wires, OEM style. Um, I'm guessing reinstall that fuse as well. Right in there. That is fuse number 49. Fuse number. F33, I don't know why they would mess with that. Let's, uh, let's just do that. All right, so for this bypass wire, um, I wanna leave that alone until we make sure the truck runs and then I'll leave it up to the shop if they wanna finish up that repair. But for now, I wanna make sure that this wire, this is buck connector, I have no idea if it's good or not. I wanna see if the continuity is there to all three power wires on the PCM connector. How do we do that without cutting, splicing, anything crazy. So I'm going to feed voltage into here with a piercing probe. This is the other end of that red wire. Through a 4 amp test light from battery positive. Okay? Now be careful. This is live. You don't want this to touch anything metal. So it's going through the wire and looking for a ground. Now I have a little baby test light connected to ground. If it finds a positive, see the little baby test light will light up. Now let's check these three pins. So that one's good. This one's good, and this one's good. So that wire does have a good connection to here. So all we have to do now is, I'm gonna just use a piercing probe to tie in, basically choose one of these. They're all coming from the same spot. And feed power to these three wires. Pretty straightforward. All right, so original PCM is reinstalled and the red wire, we're just basically making this connection again through a fuse just to be safe. Let's see if the PCM comes back online. Let's get the scanner out. All right, here we go. Key on. 
I'm not going to try to crank it yet. We're just going to scan it. See if it'll auto ID. You can even see if the PCM is re receiving power. Boom! Yes! We're back online. This thing should fire right up. No navigation. Let's do a full code scan, clear everything out. Unbelievable! Missing fuse, people! How do you explain that? It's freaking amazing. Alright, victory is very close. PCM is back online. Let's see what the codes are. Power relay outage too early. Let's just clear all of these out. Gotta love the topology and the speed of the launch products. This is the top on. Phoenix Plus. I've been using that for quite a few months now. Okay. Let's back out. Take the key off. Key back on. Make sure we don't have any weird warnings or anything. Driver's door jar. Okay. Smart scan it. We're in four-wheel drive. No, we're in two-wheel drive. Yeah, I think we should be in good shape. Okay, second code scan. Just have one code in the BCM. Key in switch. Typical Ford, not a problem. So let me save the post repair. We even select post scan. You read the mileage, excellent. Should be good to go. I'll reinstall the second battery. Hopefully the XL7 charged that up enough to give this thing a good crank. All right, moment of truth. With the original engine computer, key on and I checked the oil, oil's good. Oh baby, victory, I <laughs> love it. That's the feeling in this job that makes it worth it. So that's it, nothing too crazy, basic power and ground checks. Like I said, the shop said they checked powers and grounds, but I guess they missed one. That was the main key on power. So the computer wouldn't turn the relay on, the PCM power relay, so they're missing the other three powers. Then they started cutting wires and jumping stuff and, you know, it gets out of hand. So it's never a good idea to cut OEM wires and jump them for, for no reason, you know, without going, going the distance and checking all the inputs. Nothing wrong with the engine computer. Why was the fuse missing? I don't know. It wasn't corrosion. It wasn't a broken wire. It was a missing fuse. So, I'll uh, give them the lowdown. But that's it for this one. Fix no parts required in the parking lot. About an hour. And, uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. A little bonus footage. The shop asked me to fix up this mess. So, we're going to keep the butt connector. We know that's good. And just cut off that long red bypass wire and solder it to the three power wires right here with marine grade shrink wrap. That's the easiest way to do it, because otherwise you'd have to extend the wires because they're cut and the harness would be short and we'll just do it this way. And also, let's say one of those three wires that come from the same fuse gets corroded or broken. Oh, well, we got two backups. So the PCM will be powered up on those three spots even if two of the three wires break. So, TS-100 soldering iron, let's heat up this joint. Beautiful. Right, slide the shrink wrap over the joint. And by the way, all this stuff, solder, shrink wrap, soldering iron, you can find on the Amazon store. For your convenience, put it all in one page under electrical repair. Perfect. Make sure that marine epoxy squeezes out. And we're good to go. So, put that back in there. These two wires, they said, those are the communication wires. I guess we can put a little piece of shrink wrap in each one so they don't short out to something. 
why not? All right, toasted those on. Those are nicely sealed. That's nicely sealed. I don't know what this bypass wire is. That was there, looks like it's been there a while. So, get that out of the way. Reinstall the battery, make sure this thing runs like a top. All right, here we go. Final startup. Like a beast. Excellent. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.